This is a uh, overview of our backyard renovation in Brooklyn, New York. So as you can see, this was a very overgrown yard. Uh, there was tons of rodents and all this gross stuff. So we all got together um, and got to work on uh, clearing everything. So the first step was to clear all the weeds. Uh, that's my girlfriend, Annika, hard at work, very serious throughout this whole process. And we have Jared, uh, he's standing behind Dan there. Dan is my roommate. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it was quite the process to clear everything out. Um, that was the first step. And then we had to essentially terraform, um, redo the steps leading up to the backyard, which were very degraded beforehand. Um, but yeah, everything was clear. We put it all into the corner where there was a uh, brick so we could just leave it on top of there and, uh, and worry about leveling the dirt. So, uh, no weird slopes were going on. Um, soon after, uh, a few beers and, and a few slices of pizza, we were ready to lay down some tarp, uh, which would prevent any weeds from growing underneath. We basically laid it out throughout the whole yard, leaving a little bit of space in case we wanted to grow plants later, but, uh, it required 70 bags of mulch across the entire yard. So it was quite the process, um, Jared helped uh, tremendously in spreading all of this out. And I think the key here was that we didn't want to overload certain places. It was 70 bags, even for this yard, was just a very thin layer across the whole thing. So once we had everything set up, we uh, decided to get started on the brick or stone path because we had to dig up a bunch of stones. So I started laying out the stones from front to back uh, initially, the goal was to have the stones wind through the yard and lead to a, uh, a fire pit in the back. Uh, so this is kind of the finished, or the, the beginning of the finished yard. Uh, Chloe was a huge help in this step of the process. Uh, we decided to double actually the, the width of the path and move it on into the back left section where we soon got started with the materials on building the fire pit. Um, you know, the fire pit did not last long. We have a angry neighbor who, who quickly complained about uh, the bit of smoke it was causing. So, uh, and legally she was in the right. So we scrapped the idea, but anyway, here is the, the finished product uh, just for the record books. Then we went about, uh, you know, clearing this whole path. I, I mean, this whole uh, section of rubble um, that was the brick. Uh, it did become clear with uh, a few rains, and then it was time to party a little bit. Um, did a few more arrangements on Facebook Marketplace. I was able to find some uh, tree stumps that we were going to put in place kind of around the fire pit. Um, picked them up with a U-Haul, put them in place. They were about 80 to 50 to 80 pounds each, so it was a heck of a haul, but this was the yard on the night of a party and uh, it was extremely successful. It seemed, this was COVID, so it was a limited crowd, but everyone seemed extremely comfortable out there and that's everything I wanted. Now, after the party, I, I was walking down the street and I found this piece of wood, which I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with, but fig I'll, I'll figure out something at some point. And uh, ah. this is Honey's first time in, in snow back there. So she was, uh, she was, you could see wow. the tremendous amount of snow we had in the winter. And I got an idea that um, with my girlfriend out of town and nothing really to do, that I was going to build an ice rink. So this is me setting up the borders to that. Um, you know, building the snow banks was, I think, a pretty interesting start to that. Um, it was probably an eight foot by eight foot rink um, and filled it up with water. We have a hose running through the bottom of the apartment building. Just took me about two beers or so to sit there and wait for it to fill. And then we just sort of waited for the cold temperatures. We wanted to be below freezing for a few days and it, it almost got there. We also built this, or I <laughs> by myself uh, built this little bar um, that would have another iteration in the future. But you know, it was, it was a bit playable. You could stick handle on it. You couldn't quite stand on it, but um, soon uh, the weather warmed up just a little bit and uh, we got this free <laughs> umbrella that flew into the yard on a big uh, winter day. Uh, but you know, the first rink inspired me to do it again. So started uh, building the borders to a new rink and then found this pallet 
kind of arrangement that I thought would go very well with that tabletop I found earlier. So we started getting to work on a new bar that uh, my girlfriend so Annika is helped. working on torching the bar. This is a, obviously an incredible pattern that we got going on here. That's a hot flame. Wow, serious look. That's gonna end up looking great. And then we got some stain over here. That, that's a mahogany finish. Yeah, and there was no danger to any fire or anything because it had rained the previous night, so we just let it rip with the torch, put on that stain afterwards, and I was really happy. We both were with the final product. Uh, I thought it, it somewhat matched the uh, the topping, and uh, it was a nice little skate-up bar that we had next to the rink. Here's a uh, boy from Boston wearing a Panthers hat to test out the new bar, and uh, there we go. The next thing we had to do was just wait until we had some uh, freezing temperatures before we went to go fill the rink. It, it, you know, it would take about two to three inches of water to uh, get a good freeze in where it's stable enough to stand and skate on. Quickly, Dan returned and he was really excited about this idea. Um, and uh, we started filling up the rink and soon enough, it froze over enough to skate on. Look at her go. <laughs> Yeah, but just love being out on that rink with the uh, Panthers reverse retro and uh, having Dan and Annika join me out there. We definitely took some uh, fun pictures and it was a it was a great way to attract people to the backyard when uh, the winter weather wasn't too friendly. And this is Stanley, Jared, uh, Dan and I whipped uh, him up together and this was the winter wonderland that was our yard. An ice rink, a big snowman and a uh, lot of lot of <laughs> thick snow with a hockey dog uh honey ready to go now with the weather finally warming up uh we were looking for our next idea and we came up with the concept of a big projector screen so this is the wooden frame that we built it around a 120 inch screen ordered pretty cheap off of amazon for around 30 bucks and uh, just kind of stretched it out um it came up with this uh, funny arrangement with the wood where we can kind of toss it up on the wooden cages on the second floor. And you'll see when we zoom out here, uh, it's kind of hooked on either corner of this massive screen, but was very happy with the way the screen was stretched out, elevated, and uh, you know, ready for viewing um, over the summer. Summer and movie nights are an inevitability. And, uh, and anyway, I was walking down the street and saw this patio set. So I thought perfect seating for a little uh, movie nights. And uh, and then we set it up in the backyard, really nice cushions that uh, makes it prime for movie or potentially playoff hockey viewing. So that is where the yard stands now in April, 2021.